I used to be obsessed with Richard Feynman, and I'm glad that phase is over. If you're anything like me, then when you first started to get into physics, you realized that this name, Richard Feynman, was everywhere. You watch a YouTube video, they mention Feynman. You read a wiki article, Feynman. The Feynman lectures. Every which way you turn, Feynman's right there. And to be honest, the appeal was there. I mean, imagine this. I'm 17, 18 years old. I find a video by Richard Feynman, and he has a set of lectures on QED. What's QED? Quantum electrodynamics. That sounds super interesting. Let me watch these lectures. And here's this guy, super charismatic. He's explaining on the board how a photon is absorbed and, and emitted. And then there's these complex numbers, which can be imagined as arrows, and they turn around in, in this complex phase space. And it's all wonderful, and he's very charismatic. He, he knows how to connect with the audience. And so you're hooked. You watch all four lectures. It's an hour long each. I don't remember exactly. But as soon as you're done with these four lectures, like, this guy is awesome. I want to learn more. And he just has a way of explaining things. You go to Wikipedia. You're like, who is this man? And you realize he's a Nobel Prize winner. He won the Nobel Prize for his work on quantum electrodynamics. That's amazing. Let me keep keep watching more of this guy's stuff. So you go to YouTube, you start watching more Richard Feynman. You realize he has another set of lectures called The Character of Physical Law. Once again, let me watch. And sure enough, these lectures are just fantastic to watch. They're about mostly the scientific method, but the way he explains things and the way he cracks jokes and he relates to the audience, it's just a wonderful experience. So by the end of it, you're like, wow, this guy is amazing. I want to watch more. So let me keep watching. And then you find he has documentaries and interviews and all that stuff. And then you start hearing him explain how magnets work. And he has a way of connecting with, with the interviewer and telling him, look, I don't want to fool you if I want to explain how magnets work or why things repel each other, then I'm going to have to use analogies. And those analogies are ultimately based on electromagnetism, which is the thing you're trying to explain. And you're like, wow, like this is phenomenal stuff. And you know, I'm learning a lot. And that's all true. Until you learn that this man was not the best guy. Now, before I get to the actual full character of Feynman, I really want to say that all of the stuff that I said about Richard Feynman being one of the best instructors and explainers is true. This is all true. And in a way, I'm glad that I went through that phase. And I'm also glad that I came out of that phase. Because when you go through Richard Feynman's material, his Feynman lectures or his uh, videos on YouTube, you really learn a lot. And he has a lot of good stuff to say. And I just encourage anyone who wants to learn more about physics and the universe, just go listen to Richard Feynman talk about the universe. He has a way of making you fall in love in, with physics. And that's kind of the appeal, right? I mean, that's why a lot of people gravitate towards Feynman. It's because of the way he explains things. And yes, there's criticism, which we will get to. But that does not diminish in any way the his ability of to explain things. To this day, I remember most of his explanations of things, and I just can recite them by memory because of the amount of times that I've watched them and how interesting they were. I remember him talking about, you know, the ice is slippery, and he talks about, you know, a solid. How can a solid be slippery? But if you talk about liquids, okay, fine. You know, a lot of liquids are slippery. And just the way he presented that, I mean, it stuck with me. And then when I go back to it sometimes, I watch the same interviews. Because they're so interesting, they make you go back to the same videos. So that's why the appeal is there, and it's all fair. Let me get into a bit of his work. When, when Richard Feynman talked about quantum electrodynamics, the reason he's a big shot in physics is because he came up with a really simplified way of doing long calculations. And it wasn't until I really got to graduate school that I appreciated what he did with these diagrams. As a side note, some people say that it wasn't Feynman who really made these diagrams in the first place. It was someone else called Stuckelberg. I forgot his first name. But regardless of the dispute, Feynman was attached in some way to these diagrams, which are known as Feynman diagrams. And what they are is they are a way of summarizing this long equation called an amplitude, which you calculate in quantum field theory. The idea is that two particles interact and then they become something else or maybe they exchange momentum and you have to figure out what's the likelihood or probability that these two particles will interact in this particular way. And those diagrams are code for an equation that you have to calculate. And these diagrams are beautiful because they really summarize all that information. And when you start thinking in this Feynman diagram picture, 
all the physics sort of simplifies down and it makes it really easy to put together these puzzle pieces to make these long form calculations. As another side note, a lot of people these days are working on getting rid of Feynman diagrams for a different approach. If you're interested in that kind of, of physics, be sure to watch lectures of Nimar Khani Hamid and how he's trying to develop a new way of doing physics without the Feynman diagrams. It's not original to him. There's the whole Amplitudes project, but if you want someone who's actively working on it right now and who has YouTube lectures on this stuff, feel free to look at Nimar Khani Hamid. Brilliant, brilliant physicist. So back to Feynman, when I got to graduate school, I realized that the, these Feynman diagrams just pop up everywhere. I've been doing homework problems with Feynman diagrams. Every which way you look, again, you see Feynman diagrams. At some point in grad school, we just had a bunch of Feynman diagrams written on the board. And you look back and you say, you know, what is particle physics other than these Feynman diagrams? So in a way, his contribution to quantum electrodynamics and his Nobel Prize is completely deserved. He, he deserves all the glory that he ended up getting. But there's more to the story, right? When we say we're, we were obsessed with Feynman or he, he's such a brilliant physicist, it doesn't end there because let's talk about who Feynman was beyond the physics. Now, I want to preface this by saying I'm speaking completely off of memory. I did not have a chance to go look through all the books and get quotes and all that. So I'm speaking purely out of memory. But if I say anything wrong, maybe I misquote or do something like that, feel free to, cor to correct me. I think the main point that I'm going to say still holds. So what's the deal with Feynman? Well, let's take the first example, which is when you go back to that interview where he explains magnets and he talks about why ice is slippery. It's a very fascinating interview. You should definitely watch it. In that same interview, he talks about how the social sciences are practically useless. Now, you might have some objections to the social sciences, and sometimes you have objections to methodologies. Maybe you question certain results, statistical techniques. But to make a blanket statement about the social studies and to just paint them as fields that are worthy of nothing or they don't accomplish anything is very simplistic, and that's Part of the problem of Feynman is that he leans towards a kind of scientism that strips away from the humanities. And that's the first issue, is that the scientism that Feynman embodies ends up being trickled down to all these physics majors who end up becoming Feynman bros. All right, the second thing, in that same interview, he talks about when, when he's asked about, for example, religion, and he brings up this idea of people doing rituals just because they learned it, but they don't know why it works. And the example he uses is brushing your teeth. Now, I don't know why he chose that example. I don't know what the context was back in the day, but why would you choose brushing your teeth as the example of a ritual that people do without knowing why they do it? I mean, everyone knows why they brush their teeth and everyone sees the benefit of brushing your teeth. It's not like People are doing it, but they don't know why they're doing it. Everyone knows why you brush your teeth. And it's not like there's no benefit. Everyone knows that once you stop brushing your teeth, all of a sudden your teeth start to deteriorate. So flossing and brushing your teeth, I'm pretty sure people knew it worked even back when that interview was being conducted. So I have no idea why he would bring up such a, such a well-known thing and such a mundane task like brushing your teeth to kind of sound deep and, and mystical about this, you know, people brush their teeth. They don't, they don't know why they're doing it. Maybe religion is like that. That's completely misses the mark and misses the point. And it seems like he doesn't really understand what religion is about, or he's just there to critique religion with a broad brush. Now, the third and major issue with Feynman is the worst of them all. And that is that he was pretty predatory towards women. In his book, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman, he just outright says things that he used to do. And you start to realize, oh, this guy, this guy was a creep. For example, he would sometimes hold meetings in the strip club. Uh, sometimes he would pretend to be an undergrad so he can get with other undergrads. Sometimes he would paint pictures of nude women. And you start to see a pattern. This is creepy behavior. This guy is a creep. And what's even worse is that he says it himself. He writes it in Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman. Now, the reason I bring all this up is not just to critique Richard Feynman and his personality and his moral behavior. We're all flawed in some way. That's not why I'm doing it. 
the reason I'm critiquing it is because he is an icon, an inspiring individual to a lot of young physics majors like me. And when I first started to learn about these things, I was just disgusted. I was like, this is the same guy I've been watching. He didn't seem like that from his interviews. But then when you start learning about his behavior and the kind of guy that he was, it really pushed me away from this person. And slowly I started to lose interest in what he had to say in interviews because really once someone's moral character is deemed to be completely flawed, then you start to move away from them. And that's just very natural. And you start to realize, you know, maybe his previous opinions weren't the best in the universe. Maybe he is also flawed and he has flawed opinions, flawed ideas, and I should critique them. I should not just take them at face value. And that's exactly what happened. You know, you start to listen to him again and you're like, wait a minute, why exactly do you believe this? Or, or why do you hold to that opinion? Who is Feynman? I mean, it's just, just another guy who has opinions that could be wrong. Okay, he did wonderful physics. He deserves a Nobel Prize. Everything that he did in terms of the physics, that his, his Feynman lectures, no, no comment there. But then all of his other opinions outside of physics, well, we should take them with a grain of salt. And once you start to learn about someone's character and personality, that should really affect your judgment of what they're saying. You shouldn't just take them at face value. So if you're a physics major, if you're an undergrad, if you're a high school student who is going through a phase of getting to know Richard Feynman, I would say watch as much Richard Feynman as you can because there's a lot to learn. He's truly an exceptional individual in that regard. Don't let this discourage you from learning a ton of cool things about the universe. And eventually, if you do you know, upper level physics, you go to grad school, you're going to see Feynman everywhere. You're going to see a lot of his accomplishments there. And I don't want you to, I don't want to discourage you from that. What I want to say is that keep the science, watch Richard Feynman for the science, but also recognize the kind of damage that he's done in his community back in the day, but also potentially to the physics community these days because of people trying to emulate his personality. So what we want to do is try to stray away from that kind of personality as much as possible and try to be better people, try to have better character. So we're going to take the good stuff from Feynman, all of his good science, and we're going to leave the bad stuff. And that's how we progress together. So thanks for watching. If you stayed to this point, make sure to hit that like button and share this video with your friends. If you would love to support me, I have a Patreon, links in the description. Thank you.